Look at these kids. We're in the middle of a pandemic. They're just wasting paper goods like they don't even care. They have no clue there's a toilet paper shortage going on in America right now. Oh, <laughs> we're going to do something about this. Off to the basement I go. I had some leftover maple and walnut from that box I made a few weeks ago. I can't think of a better use for it than building a device that'll teach my kids a lesson about being frugal with our napkins. I cut a chunk of the walnut off at the chop saw and then squared it up over at the table saw. Then back to the chop saw one more time to cut it into equal pieces. I use the old draw an X on it to find the center of this piece so that way we can cut a hole right through the middle of this thing. Using my 15 year old Harbor Freight hole saw that works just about as well as you would expect a 15 year old hole saw to work, I attempt to plunge a hole right through the middle of the wood. And then I put it back together and try again. We will call this good enough. A few trips to the planer will bring this down to size, then it's over to the table saw to cut it all in half. And using another piece of walnut, I make the two braces that the blade will ride in. Since my camera battery died in the middle of this, I didn't get to show you the part where I cut out the dados. But basically all you missed is me inching the fence over little by little until I had a quarter inch groove down the middle of each piece. Then all that's left is to bring it over to the bench and do a little chisel work to clean out the spots that the blades didn't get. I'd like the bottom piece to be recessed into the guillotine. Or guillotine. However you want to call it. Anyway, I need rabbits all the way around. So I set up a sacrificial fence on my table saw and proceeded to inch it closer and closer with each pass until I had the rabbit fully cut out. If you don't have a sacrificial fence, it's just any piece of straight lumber that's clamped to the side of your regular fence so you don't ding it up when you ram a blade into it. The cleanup process goes just like it did on the dados. A little chisel work to scrape off the parts the table saw missed and then hit it with a little sandpaper to clean it up. If you've been following along with my videos, you will know how much I love bevels. I just nail them on the first try every single time. No edits needed. But this will be the last time you get to see one of these bevel montages using a miter gauge. In my upcoming video, I ended up building a jig so that you can have just as many awesome results as I do. Since I was kind of winging this without a plan, I ended up needing to cut these two pieces in half losing as little material as possible, which means I needed the thinnest kerf, and that's where my Japanese pull saw comes into play. There's no real good way to clamp these pieces together, but it's going to be supported by the miters on the sides and the bottom, and let's face it, this is a napkin holder, it's not exactly going to be bearing a lot of weight, so I think it'll be fine. I threw some glue on all the beveled edges, and then placed it into my strap clamp to dry. To make the bottom, I took a piece of walnut over to the bandsaw and resawed it in half, then shot over to the planer to bring it down to its final thickness. A little glue and a few clamps, and this panel is done. Now had I put any forethought into this, I probably would have waited to cut the rabbits until I had all the little panels together. But I didn't, so out comes the cutoff wheel on the Dremel. And for once, the little disc didn't explode. So, that's a win. Once the body of the guillotine and the bottom was all dry, it was just a matter of hitting it with the orbital sander a little bit to clean things up. The finger holes proved to be a little bit more stubborn. I really need to get a spindle sander. I then spent a little time on my trusty Menards bucket to finish things up, and Max came in to tell me I had something on my face. How embarrassing. 
Again, since this is holding nothing but napkins, all we need to do is run a quick bead of glue around, and that'll be plenty to hold the bottom in. Back to the table saw to finally cut off the piece for the mouton. No, I don't know if that's correct or not. That's what Google tells me. Also known as the top part of the blade. There's not much material on the blade, so just gluing it to the top wouldn't work. I figured my best shot was to saw it in half, then use a sanding disc on my Dremel to kind of grind out a groove for this to sit in, then throw on a lot of glue and sandwich it back together. Over to the chop saw to cut off the two cross braces for the top, and then the band saw to cut out a block for the middle that the rope will ride on. Doing my best not to drill into my hand, I created a pilot hole and then screwed in a small eye hook to attach the rope to. Using a few clamps and some glue, I attached the first cross brace, and once that was dry, I did the same to the other side. Although mostly decorative, I did add two pieces of walnut to the ends, but once the string is fed through, it will help keep the handle on the side where it belongs. I drilled out a hole in a small piece of walnut that will eventually be used to hold the blade in the upright position. I then tried to clamp the middle block in that the rope will ride on, but for some reason my clamps did not want to cooperate. After cutting out the sides of it on the bandsaw, I attached the little handle holder to the side. Now it's time for finish. I went with a dark walnut Danish oil because I like my walnut extra walnut-y. The final step is to string things up and attach the handle. Originally I had bought a little dowel for this, but why should I be using oak when everything else is made of walnut? So, a lot of sandpaper later, we have a handle. Threw some CA glue up top to hold it into place, and then put a few knots in the bottom. Man, this thing came out sharp. Well, not literally, it's just wood. It's a unique little piece that's sure to have all my friends and family wondering why the heck I made a guillotine for a napkin holder. But they'll know the reason whenever they see my kid's stumpy little fingers. Aiden, would you like another napkin? No. What about you, Ryan? Ah! If you think I did a good job, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, or subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you'd like plans for this build, I have them available listed on my website below. I hope to see you next time.